Hi everyone, Pam Gregory Astrologer. I just wanted to hop on and do a very short video this evening. It's kind of um, eight o'clock UK time Friday evening um, because we have a lot of geomagnetic activity, a lot of solar flares that, that many of you um, are aware of. I, I post very regularly on Facebook. In fact, I've been posting sort of Eight times, um, eight or ten times a day at the moment because of the regularity of the solar flares. But for those of you who don't follow me on that platform, um, I thought I'd do a short video. A few months ago, <clears throat> I made a video, recorded a video called Unstable Geomagnetics, which gave us the bigger picture of the times we're in. And I will put that video below this one. But essentially, and I, I was talking about it as we were running into April, the April astrology, that the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction we had on the 20th, 21st of April would really be the beginning of a cascade of a whole series of um, developments. And it's a 14-year cycle. And as I spoke about at the time, one of the the big themes was unstable geomagnetics because Uranus is to do with seismic activity, but also um, the out there um, geomagnetic, geocosmic activity. It's very unstable. It's not linear or gradual. It comes in quanta. It comes in surges like lightning bolts, um, that kind of thing. And Jupiter expands the potential for that. And it was in Taurus, the conjunctions in Taurus. So very much affecting the earth. So, and then after that, I in one of my updates, I, I, I said that I thought May would begin with a bang, which indeed it is, because astrologically I was seeing that Mars was entering its own sign of Aries, zero of Aries on the world axis, and that was on the 1st of May. And then on the 2nd of May, Pluto became stationary retrograde. And whenever a planet becomes stationary in either direction, its symbolism is magnified, and Pluto always intensifies the archetype of the sign it's moving through. So currently now and for the next 20 years, Pluto is moving through Aquarius. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. So again, we're back to um, electromagnetic energy, um, geomagnetism, um, geocosmic forces, etc. So same kind of themes. And since then, really, since the, um, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction when we had a flurry of solar flares then right at the beginning of may it did begin with a bang we've had a whole series of i've lost count of the number of m class flares we have had i think in the last two days we've had something like 13 14 in the last two days and i think we've had five x class flares but the potential for both of them over the weekend is extremely high. There's a 95% chance probability of more M-class flares and a 75% probability of more X-class. So I'm particularly talking about this coming weekend, 10th to the 13th. Um, and if you think back to 2018, and I've often mentioned this, we didn't have a single M-class flare the entire year. Now, the um, the solar flare scale is exponential. It's logarithmic, like the Rector scale. So an M-class flare is 10 times the strength of a C-class, an X-class is 10 times the strength of an M-class. So you can see it goes up very, very steeply in electromagnetic energy and, and force. So... Yeah, so one of the X-class flares we had, I think, just today, it's hard to keep up, but was almost a, 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 a four magnitude. It was a 3.98, I think. So that's a very strong X-class flare. Now, obviously, solar cycles um, always last 11 years. We are in solar cycle 25. The peak of that has been pulled back to now rather than being next year. We're in the peak now. And so, therefore, of course, they're peaks and troughs. So at times we're going to have a lot more solar activity and other times it will drop right off. So we're in the peak right now. So maybe you think that this is, you know, this is just normal. Well, yes and no. Um, the degree of activity, I think, is beyond what we'd expect. But, but the two big differences as well is that the Earth's magnetic field has, has thinned and become quite um, kind of unstable in areas unstable again uranus uh, symbolism um and so it therefore it's more porous 
and also the fact that the Earth is moving through the photon belt, which it only does round about every 12,000 years, give or take 500. And the photon belt um, contains or, or holds very concentrated high frequency energy. Obviously, we have many, many, many 11 year solar flares, uh, solar cycles but not always at the same time that we're moving through the photon belt. So those two differences in the, the more porous magnetic shield around the Earth and also the fact the Earth's moving through the, the photon belt are additional factors in terms of how we as humanity and the Earth are receiving this level of solar flare, this electromagnetic activity. The Earth is an electromagnetic body, as we know. We are electromagnetic beings. So we are having physical effects and and i've talked about these a great deal particularly on um on facebook when i've been writing posts but yes we we have trouble sleeping we feel exhausted but then we're wired to the mains and we can't sleep i barely slept a wink last night actually i thought i was doing rather better but not till last night um because the the flares are so intense we can have tinnitus we can have aches and pains we can have you know this heat in our body but it, it, it all has evolutionary purpose. These are very powerful ingredients bringing in new information from the far galaxy to upgrade us. And I've just had an amazing talk with um, with Zach, which should be out in a week or so, who's the, who is um, an aspect of the Ascended Master Dwal Kul about such things. And I think you will be very excited to hear what he has to say about these. But so they have evolutionary purpose now. We already, this weekend, it was expected that we were going to have five coronal mass ejections. They have literally, um, the astrophysicists, the scientists have just said, no, they're going to be six. That's fairly remarkable that they're going to be six coronal mass ejections over this weekend. Now, these contain, um, the sun hurls out these coronal mass ejections. They contain um, just billions of tons of material and they're moving at hundreds of kilometers a second. So they have tremendous force. So we have already entered a severe geomagnetic storm over this weekend. Now, this may simply have the normal effects that it's already having on us, um, all of this activity, or it may be that, um, you know, for instance, just a few days ago, there was a radio blackout across parts of Asia. It may affect some of the power grids in some geographies. It may uh, affect things like aviation, GPS systems, cell phone reception, um, that kind of thing. So um, don't be surprised if, if some of those get knocked out for a short period of time because everything is electromagnetic, particularly in our modern age, everything is digitized, everything is electrified. Think of the whole satellite system we have to run our, our modern world. Um, you know, our world, our modern world couldn't operate ordering things online, verification codes, you know, everything you do now is now digital. Um, it's no longer the old fashioned way of human to human so much, but so that um, even versus a few years ago would potentially impact us more than um, than previously. So just be aware of that. Again, I'm not saying this for panic. I'm saying this so that you understand the bigger context of it's part of our very rapid evolution. Now, what I think is, is interesting here astrologically, and I'm going to start to try and observe the astrological correlations, because for sure um, there were correlations in some surges in solar flares around the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, as I say, 20th of April. There was definitely a surge early May, Pluto stationary in Aquarius, two degrees of Aquarius. And it's very interesting today um, that the sun is conjunct 21 degrees of Taurus, the degree where we had the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Now, in astrology, degrees can, can become activated or sensitized so that other planets transiting them at a later date can reactivate them. So that's very interesting. Sun today um, conjunct 21 degrees of Taurus, the Jupiter-Uranus Jupiter conjunction point on the 20th of April. On Monday, the sun will conjunct Uranus. That's another potential activator for this kind of electromagnetic activity and solar flare activity. Just looking down the pipeline on the 16th of May, 
Venus will move over 21 degrees of Taurus. Mercury will move over it on the 29th of May and Mars will move over it, transit it on the 8th of July. So I'm not saying that we will have further surges in solar flares around those dates. I'm saying let us start to observe the further correlations. Because this is, you know, it's an experiment that we're now living through, that we've we've never experienced, I think, or been aware of experiencing. Maybe it's social media as well, of course. We all have instant communication, at least at the moment. Let's hope that lasts. Um, that it's good to start to observe, okay, how specific are the correlations to that 21 degrees of Taurus? They, the degrees kind of become hot, if you know what I mean. So... The more coherent your energy, the more you can stay in love, joy, peace, compassion and gratitude, the more you'll be able to, to ride the storm because you as an uh, uh, electromagnetic being are coherent. If you're fearful, angry, agitated, it's like interference on a television set that external energy coming in is going to affect you more. So try and stay peaceful, bare feet on the grass, be in nature, hug a tree, drink a lot of pure, clean water, meditate, breath work, candle gaze, listen to music, anything that will help you get into a calm, peaceful, coherent state will help you specifically over these peak periods, which is going to be, which is going to be this weekend. So we're going to start to keep an eye on this because I think with Pluto and Aquarius for the next 20 years, we are going to be seeing a lot more of this. It's part of our accelerated evolution. Know that these solar flares have evolutionary purpose. So I hope that's helped you a little bit. And uh, I just wanted to, say, to, to do this very quick video and uh, be back with a lot more videos to come over the next couple of weeks. God bless. Bye for now. Have a good weekend.